cooling is one of the most important um, aspects of designing an LED light uh, fixture um, because they, these high intensity LEDs get pretty hot and um, if they get too hot they'll burn out so you want to keep them as cool as possible and uh, I'm told from the manufacturer Cree and I make these super bright LEDs that if you keep them um, at a reasonable temperature, let's say below 45 degrees or so, um, they have an infinite lifespan. Um, so it's worth investing in a good cooling system, um, and then in theory, the, the LEDs will never burn out. Um, these are three, the first step is the, um, the heat sink, and these are our three uh, most popular heat sinks. Um, here you have a 9 inch uh, heat sink, and this one's a 1 foot um, long heat sink. These are both great for about a foot and a half of tank. Maybe Maybe this one, depending on how many LEDs you put on it, you could get two feet of tank out of it. Um, but I'd recommend about a foot and a half. Um, this is a smaller one, um, which is mainly used for supplemental lighting. And you can replace your T5s gradually with these ones, and you can combine them with another one to make them make them even longer as long as you want. But, uh, these will fit about three of the modular LED boards. Uh, heat sinks are great for taking the heat out, out of the LED and putting it into the air, but um, you want to add a fan to your heat sink um, just to maximize its performance. The fan greatly increases the efficiency of the heat sink. Um, these are three fans um, that we have at the moment. These are all Antec fans. Um, you can see the three different sizes here. Uh, we chose to list these ones for a very specific reason, and that is that they have <coughs> each one has a little switch um, on it here which uh, lets you control um, the speed. So you can go high, medium, or low, which changes the speed of the fan, and it also changes the noise. The faster it spins, the noisier it is. But these ones are all very quiet, and uh, even on the highest setting, you're not really going to hear anything um, over the sound of the pumps and put it on in your fish tank. Um, they're very quiet. Um, So here you can see the three different sizes. Um, I recommend the largest one. This is the 120 millimeter one. It's 120, 92, and 80 millimeter. And I recommend that one just because um, when you put it on your heat sink, it almost covers the entire um, width of heat sink. Um, so it's going to get air flowing into all those channels. Whereas if you use a smaller one, let's say you know one of these ones, you kind of need to put two um, of those smaller ones. Um, so I recommend this bigger one. These fans all come from the computer industry, um, and they're all equipped with uh, these three-pin um, Molex connectors, um, which would connect to the motherboard, motherboard of the computer. Um, so, and they, they're all 12 volts. Um, so in order to get these to run, um, the first thing you need is a 12 volt adapter. Um, just like that wall adapter. This is a pretty small one, though, so. Um, the little LED until the it's on. Um, and they come with the standard 12-volt uh, uh, DC jack. Obviously these things don't connect together. Um, so we have the power converter um, cable that we uh, actually make. And uh, this will allow you to connect your um, wall adapter um, to, to your fan. Um, so we're going to plug this in now, obviously the fan will work. Um, however, there's one more part. Usually, more than likely, you'll want more than one fan. Um, let's say we're going to put these two fans in our system. Um, you're going to need a power splitter, um, which is this one, which basically takes one input and two outputs. So we connect that to our power source here. So now I can connect my um, power adapter to the outlet and the fan should power off. Um, as you can hear, I'm quiet. These are virtually silent. This is on the lowest setting, so I can bump it up to medium and high. Um, it's noisiest on high, but it's still.
these uh, fan splitters um, allow you to par two fans um, from the one jack. However, if you have three fans or even more, you can combine them. So you could put another another power splitter on here, um, which will allow you to do three outlets um, for fans. And you can continue to do that as much as as much as you like. Um, the only other piece of hardware that we have is just a little extension cable. Um, this just extends. So, for example, you wanted this to be a little further. Um, you can add this to any any part of the circuit. And it just gives you a little bit more length, a little bit more reach. So, just a summary of the different parts that we have um, for fans and fan power. Obviously, I'd say 12 volt adapter is going to connect your wall. Uh, that thing connects to the uh, well, converter, 12 or DC jack to um, the 3 pin converter. Um, you can then split um, your cables off as many times as you want for different fans. Obviously, we have the fan itself with a 3 pin connector, um, and then a little extension cable should the your fans need to reach a little further. Um, the only other product that we have um, are these little finger guards. Um, this is the one for the 80 millimeter fan. Um, they fit right on top of the fans, and they just stop um, random things from falling in there and damaging the fan blades, or someone putting their finger in there by accident. And we have different sizes for all the different, all the different fans. So the fans um, all blow in the same direction. The air comes out um, the side of the shiny label here, or the side with these uh, little bars on it. And then so it gets sucked into the open and back and right through the front here. Um, you want when you're fixing um, the fan to your heatsink, you could essentially glue it right on there, put a little piece of glue on each of these um, fins and glue it right on the heatsink. Um, but it's better to keep it raised up a little bit, just to get a little better airflow air around the heatsink. Um, and there's a couple different ways that you can do that. A lot of people um, use egg crate in their many aquarium projects, uh, including the light their lights. Um, people will put this in the top of their light fixture and then you can actually bolt lots of fans on top of it right over your heat sinks. Um, then what you can do is attach your heat sink to the underside of the egg crate um, and that will keep them suspended um, in the air. These uh, heat sinks are aluminium. It's really easy to, really, it's, aluminium is a really soft metal so you can really easily drill a couple holes on um, each side, the four little holes in each corner of the heat sink, and just use some cable ties um, to tie it directly onto your egg crate, like that. And then these fans all have little holes, um, so you could use some cable ties just to attach those directly right on top, um, like so. A second me method that you can use is um, some like half inch aluminium like this that you can get at Home Depot or Roma or anywhere, uh, any Home Depot uh, or <laughs> any home improvement store. Um, this, again, you can um, you can glue it on to your heat sink, glue two little strips on here, and then the fan will screw directly into this metal. Um, or um, this bends pretty easily, so you can um, bend a little um, U shape like this, and then we'll screw it in to the side of your heat sink. Um, this one's kind of rough, uh, but you can make it a little tighter and just screw directly into the heat sink on each side, and then you can raise and lower your fans. I'm sure you can see that. You could raise and lower the fan as high or low off the heat sink as you want. Um, so these are all our components um, for cooling fans and heat sinks and various connectors. Um, if you have any questions. Hopefully you don't get lost. Uh, but if you have any questions, feel free to let us know. Uh, I'll try to help you out. Um, the only thing I didn't mention was um, you can, as I say, the fan blows air out through the front with the little bars here. And you can attach it um, this way, which will cause air to be drawn into the heat sink through the sides and then up um, through the fan. That uh, sort of aids natural convection. Air would naturally rise up out of the heat sink um, as it heats. So I tend to think that that might be the way to go. Um, however, you can also do it the opposite way, um, which would see you're sucked into the heat sink and then push it out 
um, the sides. Is it? I think probably pulling it up through the heatsink is better, but um, it probably doesn't make that much of a difference um, at all, really. Um, so as I said, that's uh, pretty much it for heatsink and fans. Any questions? Let us know.